So, there is no greater and greater love. And today we would like to take time to remember those who have gone on before us and paid the ultimate price with their lives for the freedom of this country and, of course, other societies when we're speaking mainly of our military men and women who really have sacrificed amen, their, their lives uh, for doing, uh, for just the freedoms that, that, we, uh, that we have. And we just thank God for, for them. We just honor them. And, of course, those who are currently serving and those who have served. Uh, and thinking about t uh, this, this holiday, this Memorial Day, to remember uh, sacrifices. And, and I can only really come to this particular passage of Scripture uh, where, as Jesus began to speak here in John 15, and I started with 12, so, uh, potentially this is my commandment, he says, that you love one another, and then as I have loved you. And then he went on to really explain what he's talking about there in verse number 12. In verse 13 he says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And that's our passages for today. Jesus is speaking to his disciples after eating his last supper, as described in chapter number 13 of John, verse number 2. And it reads, And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. And then after that, Jesus tells of his betrayal. These things are all happening when they sit down to, to eat and then afterwards they, they, they get ready to go. And Jesus began to speak of his betrayal. And when Judas leaves their company, Jesus began to tell them of his soon demise. Jesus began to share with them that, that, yes, he is going to leave them and he is going to die uh, at the hands. It says later in the same discourse in John chapter 13, verses 34 through 35, Jesus continues to say, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Then he goes on in verse number 35 of chapter number 13. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. So look at our text on today. You will see that he repeats that commandment in John chapter 15, verse number 12. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved, as loved you. It just shows us that love has everything to do with his mission, amen, to the world and ours too. So speaking about love, love was discussed and taught this morning in Sunday school, amen. We're gonna, and love was sung about in the, in the songs we've heard, uh, the, script, the scriptures in which we have read, in which we're going to declare on today, is about the love of God. And the type of love where there is no greater love. There is no greater love. By the time Jesus gets to our part of discussion, he begins to talk about vine and the branches in John chapter number 15. Here's what he says in verses number 1 and 2 of, of chapter number 15. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So it's kind of like just the plants and everything which we have and, and how they actually grow or what it takes for them to grow. Uh, this is an indictment on any believer that has decided to lessen their own load by throwing in the towel. Uh, that's what happens is that we get so overloaded with things. And, you know, it, it, it seems as though that in order for me to get, amen, uh, 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 to get better, I need to unload. If I stop doing what I ought to be doing. Think about it for a minute. If we have fruit trees, here they are bearing fruit. Basically, what they're doing, they're doing just what they're supposed to be doing. I thank God that they have never gotten tired of doing what they're supposed to be doing. 
Amen. Uh, it's just like what he's talking about how if Jesus says that he is the true vine and, and we are the branches and, and if we're connected to the true source, then therefore we are to bring forth fruit and not only but fruit, but also much fruit, more fruit. Amen. But when we get tired of that and we stop producing, what he says is that from there on, then that particular branch, amen, will be taken out. Yeah. Mm. And the ones that are actually producing, mm. he says, will purge or prune. Yeah. You know how it is when they're producing the plants and everything and Tina would go and just break off a piece and, and so it can just continue just to grow more. Amen. And that's what happens when we get into the Word and the Word gets into us. What happens is that the Word begins to take, listen to this, y'all, purge us or to cleanse us Amen. so we may produce more fruit. Yes, this is an indictment on any believer who has decided to lessen their own load by throwing in the towel. We are told to be just as the plant. It just grow and bear fruit. Amen. Whatever fruit it is, they just bear it. Uh, for us, it is to love. Yes. From love, everything else flows. Amen. Let's take a look at our text. We uh, verse. Uh, Verse 12 has been explained in John chapter 13, 34 through 35, which Jesus says, A new commandment I give unto you, uh, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one toward another. Because it's a known fact that when folk don't love folk, they just end up hating them. So opposite of love is hate. If I love somebody, I'm going to treat them right. If I hate somebody, yeah, and then that's bad for the person who's supposed to have that love. Amen. Because the first thing that someone would say when you end up doing something wrong is that, and I thought you were a, a Christian. Because folk expect you to do exactly what you're supposed to do, and that is to bear love Amen. and more love, regardless what they do to you. John 15, 13 says, Where love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And can you tell your neighbor, there is no greater love. Now I don't know which neighbor said it, but can the other neighbor tell the other neighbor, there is no greater love. There is no greater love. First of all, we see here, in particularly in verse number uh, chapter number 15, uh, verse number 13, greater love hath no man than this. I'd like to share with us here in this particular verse when Jesus began to say greater love hath no man than this. It seems as though Jesus has already taken a comparison of love. Amen. So first of all, love compared. We see in the beginning of this verse, greater love hath no man than this. Love has been viewed throughout the ages as a type of relationship. A type of relationship. The Four Loves, there is a book by C.S. Lewis, but by the, it's entitled The Four Loves, which explores the nature of love from a Christian and philosophical perspective uh, through thought experiments. That's interesting. Thought experiments. Uh, I don't know how that type of experiment would work other than just, just thinking. So the four types of love in which he talks about here, and this I think some of us may have already uh, may know this, there's this first one called storage. I know this is Greek and uh, this affection. Affection is fondness through familiarity, uh, a brotherly love especially between family members or people who have otherwise found themselves together by chance. Storage. There's another love, philia. Friendship. It's love between friends. Friendship is the strong bond existing between people who share common interests or activity. And then there's a the third one, eros. Some of us know that as what? 
romance. romance. Uh, for Lewis was love in the sense of being in love or loving someone. But that's where boys and girls, they, get, they call them boyfriend and, and girlfriend. And then there is one called agape. That's the one in which we are so familiar with. Unconditional love or charity. It's a love that brings forth caring regardless of the circumstance. And those are the four loves in which we may compare. The type of love that Jesus is speaking of. Today our text directs us to directs us to a study to love, to a love that is called agape. A love that does not wane over time. As you can tell, love has been compared to itself by a type of subgroups in which we have just talked about and looked at right there. We are people who are who basically are, are of measures and, and weights. Everything is some type of comparison. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. You know, uh, I do need to lose a little bit of that we are. So we understand about comparisons. Uh, and, and then even with the type of loves in which we have, when we look at them and, and we think about them sometimes of family and, and friends and, and, and then romance and, and then that, that, that unconditional type. But really with that unconditional type of love that agape, everything else falls beneath it. So if we have any type of love, then, then we first of all should have that agape type love, which basically is, is so unconditional that regardless of what happens, I'm still going to love you. Wow. Still going to love you. And we had talked, amen, in Bible study about, amen, milk and meat. And we began to think about it and talk about it and discuss it, and we talked about the milk, uh, you know, the milk of the word, and and how babies, amen, drink milk in order to really grow because the whole purpose is to grow. But we also said that if a person remained on milk, then they become, what's that word? Uh, Stunted. They just don't grow. And babies off the, at, at some point come off the milk and start eating meat. But in order for them to do that, you got to have teeth. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Replacements. Yeah, right, you know, yes. And so, in order to really chew the food real good, and in order to chew the food real good, it's a digestion process, you see? Because if it's not chewed good, or chewed, chewed, if it's not chewed good, then the, the baby would just simply choke. So we talked about that, and, and then when looking at this, we said that, well, wow, one of the things in which we know is meat is love. Now, love is something you gotta chew on. Chew on. <laughs> you know, when they when somebody tell you, you know, you say you saved and came out, and somebody tell you you gotta love them. What? <laughs> you better ask somebody, you know what I'm saying? You gotta love them. And that's something you gotta chew on every now and then. Because you know it's something in which we ought to be doing. Because we're bearing fruit, we gotta bear much fruit. Yes. Thinking about all that love and everything, and what came to mind was this song that some of you who are over 50 may know. And it's this, and uh, hopefully it works. <laughs> Love in which 
which we made mention earlier, which comes and goes. The family love comes and goes. We find that out whenever we have funerals in the family. Well, well, well. Amen. That brotherly love comes and goes. But when we have that agape love, that agape love where grounded in it will stand there and regardless yeah, of what comes our way, yeah. we're going to love despite of it. Amen. In spite of it. We're just going to love. But yes, here in John chapter number 15, verse number 13, the first part says, Greater love hath no man than this. There is no greater love. Secondly and lastly, look at that other part. It says that a man lay down his life for his friends. Love conceived. Love conceived. But first we have love compared. And now we have love conceived. That a man lay down his life for his friends. We have studied sacrificial offerings in the Old Testament, but the concept of sacrificial love was made abundantly clear in John 3.16. And this is what it says. Oh, yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I, I, I really, as I was reading it, I, and I see that about love and about giving. And we, we made mention regarding love is love of it is, it's a word of action, not just uh, something in which we say, but, but something in which we mean, and it's from the heart, and, and action takes place with this So, So here God loved the world because God loved the world. He gave. Yes. But he just didn't give anything. He gave his, his only begotten son, and it makes us really consider that because if we have an only child, not just son, but an only child, are we willing to give, to, to lay down the life of our only child, amen, for some folk who don't care nothing about you? That takes some love. That's love. So yes, sacrificial love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth in him, including all those folk that didn't think much about him at all, who hated him, and who cursed him. But he said, whosoever, whoever it might be, oh, yes. 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 believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. A promise that we can stand on. Yes, yes. Paul the Apostle even said in Ephesians 5 and 2, A walk in love, yes. as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering, a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Amen. So when you think of the agape love that is spoken of here, you can recall many who have laid down their lives for someone else. That church is love without conditions. Amen. You hear time and time again on the news, hurricanes, tornadoes, and everything else, accidents. And folk who don't even know the, the, the person that's in jeopardy, whose life is, is in jeopardy, goes and, and risks their own life oh, yeah. just to help the fellow man. Amen. That's something that's, that's in us. So we can't really say that we don't understand what a God be really is. We can't really say that, yes, I know it's unconditional, but there is no way because it's in us. Why is it in us? Because God made you. Amen. He made you. And he knows. Thank you. If it couldn't be done, he would not have said it. Thank you. That a God be love. So be mindful, this love of itself is not the ticket to heaven. 
Lastly, according to the scriptures, in order to get to heaven and to, and to the Father, you must go through what is called the door, who is Jesus. Yes, yes. The Bible says in John 10, 7, Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. That's right. I've heard a song that says you can't go over, you can't go under, you can't even go around, but you must go through the door. Amen. Uh, Jesus said if somebody come and try to go through the window or yeah. some other way, he ain't nothing but a, a thief or a robber. The one, amen, who's called the door will lay down his, his life. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. And he says this right here. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And that's why... <laughs> One verse rings so loud. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in the Son, whoever so believeth in him, shall not perish, be condemned, but have everlasting life. Yes. God so loved the world, God so loved you, and God so loved me. So much that he gave his only begotten son, yes. Jesus, to die for us, yes. for our sins. Sins in which we could not do anything with or about. And the only thing that could, or the only one that could, is Jesus Christ himself. Amen. And that is by way of the cross. I can only say what a mighty God we serve. Yes. Because there is no greater love. No greater. Mm -hmm. Scripture says once again, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus said that because he knew he was going to end up laying down his life for his friends. Amen. Later on, he said in the same uh, passage of scripture here, he says, my friends, I'll tell you who my friends are those who keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. One of the commandments he's had, he has for us today is love. Love one another, he says. Amen. Sunday school lesson talked about love that neighbor as thyself. Amen. So if you love yourself, then we owe it to God to love our neighbor. Amen. We owe it to ourselves to love our neighbor. The other question is, who's my neighbor? The same folk who's our friend. Amen. Those who keep our who keep us commanded. And not, not the person living next door to you, but anybody that you see, Amen. we must love them. And love is an exercise in which all of us must do. The door to church is open. Let us stand.